Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Dr. Vidya Savant and in this video, I'm going to discuss about frequency attacks on monoalphabetic substitution cipher. For example, the scissor cipher, a fine cipher. Okay, so before that, let us have a quick recap on substitution cipher and its types. I've discussed this thoroughly in my video that is lecture number three the link is provided in the description so i will request you first to go through that link first see that video and then come here so that you will understand this well so coming to what a substitution cipher as i explained it in my previous video a substitution cipher basically takes the letter of the play text for example let me say i want to send a secret message called as hello to another receiver so i use a substitution cipher and the substitution cipher so we use a substitution cipher and the substitution cipher replaces each of the letter of the plain text with a, another letter For example, H may be replaced with X, E will be replaced, let us say, with D, L will be replaced with another letter C. Now, L is mapped to C, so another L will be replaced by C, O may be replaced by M. So, it is based upon substitution. So, we are substituting each letter of the plain text with another letter. This is known as substitution cipher. Now, as you can see here, L is repetitive. So, there are two L's and hence even in the cipher text, it has been replaced by two C's. That means letter L has been mapped to letter C. H was mapped to X, E is mapped to D, L is mapped to C and O is mapped to M. This is known as one to one mapping and hence, such type of substitution ciphers are called as monoalphabetic substitution cipher. So basically there are two types of ciphers. One is called as monoalphabetic substitution cipher and second is called as polyalphabetic substitution cipher. Now, polyalphabetic substitution cipher is based on one to many mapping. For example, in this case, the letter L has been mapped to C. So, every time a letter L occurs in your plain text, it will be mapped to letter C. But this makes it highly vulnerable to security attacks. A attacker can easily know that a letter L in the plain text has got a corresponding letter C in the cipher text because whenever L repeats, C also repeats in the cipher text. While in polyalphabetic cipher, we hide this repetitive frequency. So the second time a L occurs, rather than mapping it to C, we map it to some other letter, let me say A. Again, let us say a third time if a L occurs, I would map it to another letter, let me say Z. So, every time a letter repeats, it is replaced by a different letter in the cipher text. Such type of cipher text are called as polyalphabetic cipher text. Now, coming to the question, why do we require polyalphabetic ciphers? Monoalphabetic ciphers, basically, since they are using a one-to-one -one mapping, they can be easily decoded by attackers. The attackers will do an analysis known as frequency analysis on the cipher text that is transmitted. This analysis is also called a statistical attack and the attacker will try to predict what is the plain text. He does a frequency analysis and based upon frequency analysis, he tries to do a prediction of your plain text. This is possible in monoalphabetic because repetitive letters in the plain text are replaced by the same 
character in the cipher text while a polyalphabetic cipher hides the frequency distribution of these repeating letters means every time a letter repeats itself each time it is replaced by a different letter thereby confusing a attacker as to what is the plain text or the particular cipher text letter belongs to which plain text letter so polyalphabetic cipher is stronger cryptographically as compared to that of monoalphabetic cipher because it hides the frequency distribution of repetitive letter so coming to the point of what is frequency analysis or how does a attacker perform the frequency analysis or which is also known as statistical analysis so we'll consider that we want to send a plain text which is we will meet in the middle of the airport to the receiver and we are using a mono alphabetic substitution cipher so i give this to a mono alphabetic substitution cipher and let us say the mono alphabetic substitution cipher is using the following mapping that is a is mapped to n letter b in plain text will be mapped to o c will be mapped to p and so on and so forth we are using this map therefore the mono alphabetic cipher now replaces each letter of the plain text with its corresponding cipher text letter for example w is replaced by j e the letter e in plain text will be replaced by letter r in cipher text the letter w again will be replaced by j i will be replaced by v l will be replaced by y again l is appearing and we are since we are using mono alphabetic substitution cipher it will be replaced by y and so on and so forth we will replace each of the letter in the plain text with its corresponding letter in the cipher text thereby generating a output which is shown in yellow here now this cipher text that is generated by the mono alphabetic cipher is sent to the receiver if it is a authorized receiver he has the appropriate key to know this mapping and he can recover the plain text again but to attackers it looks like a junk a meaningless text which has no meaning but the attacker will try to do certain analysis on the cipher text and will try to predict what this plain text is so he will do certain attacks and one of the attack is called as statistical attack in which he does a frequency analysis of the letters appearing in the cipher text let us try to understand what do we mean by frequency analysis but before that we should know the frequency distribution of the letters that appear in english language this graph depicts that let us say we have 10000 letters in a paragraph and in that paragraph we try to count how many times letter a appears how many times letter b appears c appears d appears and so on and so forth okay so if you do that you will see that the very commonly occurring letter is the letter e so e very commonly occurs in any text in the form of words like we the c and so on and so forth the next frequently occurring letter is the letter t after that the most commonly used letter if you see the graph is o followed by a and so on and so forth while if you see the letters such as x and z they are very less frequently used if i rearrange the frequency distribution shown in graph it is seen that letter e is quite often used followed by t followed by o followed by a and so on and so forth so this knowledge of frequency distribution of english language is used by an attacker to decrypt any cipher text and to decode the plain text he tries to predict what is the plain text let us check this out with the help of an example let us try to solve the following exercise 
what is the plain text for the given cipher text so let us say this is the cipher text we had taken which we had taken in the previous example now what an attacker does is attacker carries out a frequency analysis on the cipher text he basically counts the number of time each letter occurs now the letter that are occurring in this is r so if you count r it is occurring six times then he sees that okay next to frequently occurring letter is v and it is occurring four times the another letter which is occurring frequently is g which is again occurring four times the next letter which is occurring frequently is y three times then followed by j which occurs two times and so on and so forth so he writes the frequency table for this particular letter and then he compares it with the standard frequency table where we knew that the most frequently occurring letter is e followed by t followed by o followed by a and so on and so forth now because e occurs frequently in the standard english language text he assigns the most frequently occurring letter r in the cipher text to e now v and g both have got same frequency so either v can be t or g can be t so he is the attacker gets confused here what the attacker tries to do he will take a three letter word which has got the letter r in it because he is sure that r is e so he takes the letter r and he replaces it with e so which is the commonly used english word which ends with letter e that is the so he gets the letter t h e that means g has been mapped to t so he gets the mapping of r as e he gets the mapping of g as t and u as h so this is what he recovers as of now the attacker now tries to find out which other three letter or two letter word uses r so if you see the cipher text the word jr is ending with r so he says it is the first letter is unknown and the second letter is e now he wants to predict a two letter word which ends with e and the commonly used two letter word which ends with e is v so he maps j to w so the attacker comes to know that the cipher text letter j belongs to plain text letter w now that he has cracked r g u and j he will try to find out where these letters are used in the cipher text so if you see this word z r r g you can easily replace the two r's with e and the g with t and then try to find out which is the four letter word which has got double e and t that is meat therefore for this given cipher text the attacker predicts the plain text to be v this is unknown because he has not cracked it the third word is meat the fourth word has not been cracked followed by the the in this way he then continues ahead and decodes the other words as well this was possible because the attacker had a knowledge of standard frequency distribution of the letters appearing in english paragraphs so such a kind of attack which is based upon statistical analysis or frequency analysis is known as statistical attack coming up in the next video i will be discussing on modular arithmetic and we'll also check out how to solve numericals on modular arithmetic thank you guys for watching this video i hope you understood the concepts that i taught today if you understood the concepts if you liked my video kindly click on the like button kindly subscribe to my channel share my channel so that i'm motivated to make more such videos take care stay blessed have a good day